Thank you again. Please put your hands together. Just keep saying to go. Amen, that's the whole time. And of course, Mrs. Shadri. Give a round of applause, thank you. Thank you guys, that was fantastic. Thank you, thank you. And you didn't break the string this time, did you? No, oh, well done. We'll get you next time. Last time we broke a string at the Philharmonic and we, we all just thought it was part of the, uh, the act. It's great. Genius. Thank you guys. Uh, we'll be seeing the guys uh, later on in the second half uh, along with Donovan. But before they leave, one more round of applause please. Thank you. So, Rishikesh, India, The Beatles, 1968. We're looking at these fantastic, iconic images of the Beatles in Rishikesh. I'm not just saying this, but they, they are amongst, personally, my favourite shots of the Beatles because they look so relaxed and chilled away from all the, uh, all the madness and all the nonsense, that I'm sure. Um, do we, we, we quite like these images, don't we? Yeah. But no, I'd like to introduce uh, the guy who took the photographs, who was with the Beatles in Rishikesh in India. Please put your hands together, welcome on stage, Mr. Paul Saltzman. Uh, first of all, Paul, thank you very much for allowing us to show just some of the, these pictures. I, I, we were talking before, I do love them, and I, I know Jean Catherine, who very kindly put to my slides, and, and all the slides you're going to see she put together, Jean and I were saying how, how wonderful we think they are. So thank you to Jean, and thank you to Paul Saltzman. Actually, thank you to Jean because she was the one who said, why don't you come over this year? Thank you, Jean. Well, we're, we're delighted that the, when we had the idea of this concert, we thought if we, could, if we could have the permission to have a couple of pictures, that would be great. But to have you here, it's fantastic. How did you end up on this, and what would have been an amazing journey? How did you end up in Michigan? Um, by, by serendipity, for sure. Um, do you know where the word serendipity comes from, anybody? It's very hard to find out where the word serendipity comes from, but I finally found out it's from the Arabic, meaning an island of gems. So Rishikesh, in a sense, was an island of gems. The, the uh, Beatles wrote 48 songs in less than seven weeks which I think was probably their most creative capsule of time in their whole careers. And I was, I was really honored to be there. I was there because I had a broken heart. It's really an odd story. I was working on a film for the National Film Board of Canada, which is where I'm from. And I got a letter from my girlfriend saying, Dear Paul, I've moved in with Henry. <laughs> it's, it's always funny in the retelling. <laughs> and, um, and somebody said, why don't you try meditation for the heartbreak? And I knew nothing about meditation. And I went to the ashram not knowing they were there. Uh, and I got to the ashram and I said, I've come to learn meditation. And the fellow who met me at the, at the locked gate said, I'm sorry, the ashram is closed because the Beatles and their wives are here, which is when I learned that they were there, and I was a fan. I'd seen them in Toronto uh, live in 1964, and, you know, their music had already blown me away, as probably... How many people here were blown away by their music? Uh, really, really life-changing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, life-changing. So, um, so I had to wait outside the gate for eight days to get in. I slept in a tent, and it was not to meet the Beatles. It was when you're devastated with one of those kind of heartbreaks. How many people have had a heart, difficult heartbreak? Hands up. Hands up. Difficult heartbreaks? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not uncommon, as you know. Um, and then I was allowed in, and I learned meditation, which took three minutes, four minutes. Uh, and I did one 30-minute meditation, and it was a miracle. Again, I knew nothing about this stuff. And one 30-minute meditation, it was like the knife in the heart was gone. And um, the only other thing, there's lots of stories to tell, and I'll, I'll be doing some of that on Sunday. Uh, but listening to this incredible uh, uh, sitar group, 
reminds me of one of the most incredible experiences I had, which was uh, everyone, we were sitting all together by a long, at a long table out by the cliff overlooking the Ganges River. And it was really idyllic, it was very magical. And uh, everyone got up to go get ready for dinner, and George looked over at me, and there were just the two of us still sitting there, and he said, uh, I was just going to go to practice the sitar, do you want to come? And I said, sure. Didn't even think of getting my camera, which is why you didn't see a photo of this. And we went to his meditation room, and he picked up the sitar and was sitting on the floor, and I was sitting on the floor. A very small room, maybe about that wide, and twice as long. And he played the sitar, and I closed my eyes, and I saw him close his eyes, and I have no idea whether he played for 15 minutes or an hour, the time, one of those magical times where time truly shifts. And when I could hear or feel the last note fading, I slowly opened my eyes, and he was opening his eyes, and I was stoned from the music, from the sitar. And we had an amazing conversation that was life-changing. The key piece of it was, he said, with enormous humility, George was 24 years old, I happened to be 24 with him, but he was 24. And how this amazing, one of the most famous four rock and roll stars in the world, how he knew this stuff is really worth pondering. He said with complete humility, he said, like we're the Beatles after all, aren't we? We have all the money you could ever dream of. We have all the fame you could ever wish for, but it isn't love, it isn't health, it isn't peace inside, is it? And that was life-changing for me. So I, um, I have huge love and respect for George and all the guys, and um, thank you for having me here and for having the photos. Thank you very much, for Thank you very much, Paul Sussman. As Paul said, uh, he will be at the Delphi for an interview and a presentation of his wonderful uh, pictures. And he, had, he will have, I think, some limited edition uh, images and some books available on Sunday. So, uh, and there's a meeting.